In this video, I'm going to explain how to use the new Support Structure Generation tool in Autodesk MeshMixer 2.0. We're going to use this model as an example. Clearly, no matter how you print this model, there are going to be overhangs that will need to be supported, otherwise they'll droop. Before we can generate the support, we need to set the physical size of the model. Go to the Analysis tab and open the Unit Scale tool. In this tool, you can click and drag on the labels to change that dimension. The scaling is always uniform, so the other axes update too. Click Done to exit the tool. Stay in the Analysis tab and run the Overhangs tool. The first thing it will do is find all the overhangs and highlight them in red. The highlight is dependent on the angle threshold. Once you are satisfied with the overhang areas, click the Support All Overhangs button on the bottom left. It will think for a few seconds and then you'll see the generated support structure in the viewport. The support is a set of branching posts as you can see here. There are a lot of parameters to the generator. If you're not happy with the current result, click the Remove All Support button. The density parameter controls the number of contact points between the support and the model. If you turn it up, there will be more support points and the branching will be denser. This should result in a higher quality print, but the support may be harder to break off. The generator will perform best if it knows a bit about your 3D print settings. The layer height parameter should be set to the same value as used in your slicer. The default is 0.2 mm, the same as the standard print quality layer height in MakerWare. The post diameter setting controls how thick the support posts are. The default works well on a replicator too, but you may need thicker posts on other printers. The tip diameter controls the size of the connection to the model. Smaller tips will break off more easily, but will not be as strong. The base of the post flares out to create a small local raft. The length of the transition is controlled by the base layer setting multiplied by layer height. Similarly, you can control the diameter of the post bases. Set the base layers to zero to get rid of the local rafts, but keep in mind that skinny posts may not stick to the build plate. Under the parts of the model that will be nearly touching the build platform, it will not be possible to fit any posts. Set the Y offset parameter to a few millimeters to offset the model vertically, and regenerate the support to make space for support posts. Here's the same model in another orientation. Unfortunately, some of the generated structures are not going to be strong enough during the print. For example, the entire nose is supported by one single diagonal post. As a result, this area will wiggle during the print and eventually catch on the print head and break. To resolve this, we can add struts to the support structure. Turn up the strut density and regenerate the support. However, this may end up wasting a lot of material and time. To add a strut, just left click on the existing support. Struts can only be added in some places. If nothing happens, the system could not find a suitable strut. You can remove a strut by control clicking on it or command clicking on a Mac. You can also draw struts yourself. Left drag from a point on the support structure to either another point on the support or a point on the model. If the strut collides with the model or the tip would overlap too much, it will not be added and will just disappear when you release the mouse. To override this behavior, hold down shift while you draw the strut. It will turn blue and collisions will be ignored. The max angle parameter controls how steep the support structure is allowed to be. Turning it up from 45 will generate the safest structure, but will also use more material and print time. One current limitation is that once you exit the overhangs tool, the struts are baked into your model and become like any other triangles. Here's an example where I imported a mesh with support structure. I didn't notice that the generator did not add support under the tail. To try to fix this, run the overhangs tool and generate support again, with the same settings you used before. Because of collisions, most support points will be ignored. The few that are generated you can control click on to get rid of. Now I'll just click on the model to add new struts. They won't join to the existing baked in support, but they can connect to it with tip to object connections. Here's another area where this post might not be strong enough. So I'll add a few more connections. I have to override collisions with the shift key to add these posts. Next we print the model. It should release easily from the print bed, although often some of the post rafts will be left behind. Now we have to remove the support. With the right tip size, I use 0.5 millimeters here, most of the posts will easily break off by hand. Sometimes it helps to break the posts at the branching points. This will separate the structure and make the individual parts easier to remove.
Because this model is a bit fragile, I switched to a small snips for more precision. It is not really necessary to cut at the tips. Generally, if you break the post in the middle, each side of it will come off easily. A bit more work and we're done. It only took about 4 minutes to remove the support, and as you can see, there isn't that much of it. We've found that these support structures require much less material than any others we've tried. For this model, the support weighs about 4.2 grams. A print of the same model using the support in MakerWare results in 18.5 grams of support, and the raft we needed to get the support to stick weighs almost 6 grams. In this case, the print time was also about an hour faster. However, this isn't always the case, sometimes the tree support can take longer, especially for smaller prints where the head has to do more traveling.